Here we are given an Atwood machine, also just known as a pulley, where we have a mass one on the left side and a mass two on the right side, connected by the same string that goes around the pulley, where the mass two is greater than the mass one. And it asks us to solve for A and the force and tension, A being acceleration. One thing we know is that the pulley is ideal. Ideal just means that there's no energy loss or friction on this pulley and there's no mass to that pulley. So it just means that the fact that they're on a string has nothing to do with how the calculations will go. You will just have these two masses and whatever force is applied to them. So first, if we wanted to solve for A, because A we have to solve for first in order to get to force and tension, we need to use our system method and then draw a free body diagram. But regarding Atwood machines, in your free body diagrams, you have to set the acceleration direction as positive, or you'll get the wrong answer. That's just how it works. You won't get the right answer for your derivation if you don't set your positive direction the same direction as your acceleration. So how do we find which direction our acceleration is in? So, I mean, if, if you think about it, if you have if you have a feather connected on one side of a string and then a rock connected on the other side of a string, is, as opposed to two blocks, you just have a feather on this side and a rock on this side, it's going to pull straight down. The rock is going to pull straight down, and this is going to move up. So basically, our acceleration will move like this, where we have A going down here and A going up here. So things with greater mass will move down on that would at my machine, and then vice versa for if they move up. So now we need to create our free body diagram for the system method. So now one thing is defining what our system is. If we define our system as this entire thing here, it means that whatever it means that all the forces in it will cancel because the system is everything. So if we have a force going downward on each of these where we do because it's gravity and then we have a tension force that counteracts it that goes up this way take a second to pause the video and think where our force is for the system would be now our forces for the system would be here this would be our system we would have our system look like this Okay. Because if we had this same exact thing, but sideways, where there wasn't a pulley, your system would look like this. Just an M1 and an M2 attached by a rope in the middle. It's just as if we took this off the pulley and spread it out on the floor. Now, of course, there's a tension force that goes this way and a tension force that goes this way. Those are equal to one another and they cancel out. So our system would be just the string portion. So what's left is the forces acting on either one of these two blocks. So of our system, we need to define positive and negative before we do anything. So our positive is going to be downwards on M2. So positive is going to be down, negative is going to be up, and then right and left don't matter. So we just set them what we normally do as if they were on an x-axis. So now we know that if positive is down, the force that is going down is going to be positive, and we know that the M2 is on that side, so force of gravity on number two would be our positive direction. And then our negative direction, which goes up, would be force of gravity on one. And one thing we do know is that since mass of two is greater than mass of one, that force of gravity on two is greater than force of gravity on one because gravity is acting on both of these blocks equally. Now what we need to do is find our sum of equations or our sum of forces equation. So if we were to find the sum of forces equation for, for both of these in a system, first of all, that is equal to mass of the system times acceleration of the system. Now we can get rid of this because we've already taken that into account. And that's also equal to force of gravity two because that is our positive thing, minus force of gravity one because that's our negative thing, minus force of gravity one is equal to this thing here. 
So now we have M system, A system. M system simplifies down to M1 plus M2, because that's what mass and system means. And then we're left with A of the system is equal to our force of gravity 2 minus our force of gravity 1. So in other words, we have mass 2 times gravity minus mass 1 times gravity. Okay, and then now we solve for our A because that's what our desired value is. A is equal to M2G minus M1G all over M1 plus M2. Notice how when I found this, I didn't bother to distribute it because it's just way easier to divide by this, which instantly isolates your A instead of distributing it and then having to undistribute it to then isolate A again. Okay. This looks like it's done, but it's not quite done yet. There's one more thing we can do. A is equal to G, and we reverse distribute that G, M2 minus M1, just like that, M1 plus M2. So this is our completed, this is our completed acceleration. And now we need to know the force of tension. So force of tension, no longer will we use the system method for force of tension. We will now use the object method. Okay, so basically now our system is these two objects separated. So now let's create a free body diagram that would represent our object method. So actually we can, we have to do two because we have two separate things. So we have here, I'm gonna move this dot down a bit. We have our M1 and we have our M2. Our M1, the forces acting on it are the force of tension and then force of gravity one where force of tension is greater than force of gravity one because it's accelerating upwards as we have it over here. I kind of erased it when I erased the other thing. That's an A. And then on this one, we have our force of tension that also goes upwards. And then our force of gravity two, where our force of gravity or force of tension is less than force of gravity two. There we go. Okay, and then now we set our positives and negatives. This time we need to do our positives and negatives in accordance to everything and how they work. So let's take into account setting our acceleration directions as positive and negative or you'll get the wrong answer. So on this one, Mass one accelerates upwards, so positive is upwards, doesn't matter about the x-axis, downwards is negative. This one, it accelerates downwards, so positive is downwards, negative is up, and then doesn't matter about the x-axis. So that's probably the hardest part, setting things up and down, and then we just do this thing here, and then the second hardest part would just be simplifying it all down. So this is our positive, this is our negative, this is our negative, this is our positive. Now we do our sum of forces equations. Also, before I actually get into sum of forces equations, I'm going to discuss why I don't separate this with a force of tension 1 and a force of tension 2. Because these forces on this are the exact same, again, I'm going to use this diagram, as if we had this. So it's just as if I took the string and then put it all together in one. So, or I just took it off this pulley and laid it down on the thing. Then you have two tension forces, hello, two tension forces that go that way, that are equal to one another. These two are equal to one another. So because we know they're equal on either side, because force of tension can't be not equal, our forces of tension are equal to one another. So now let's set our sum of forces equations. Sum of forces in one is equal to mass one acceleration of the system. We know that this acceleration of the system is the same on both of them because we set our directions of positive and negative as 
the directions of acceleration. Meaning that they'll all cancel out in the end and then everything will be equal to A of the system even if they're moving in different directions because we already set our different directions as positive and negative. And obviously they're going to be moving at the same speed, whether it be up or down. And then this is also equal to force of tension minus force of gravity over 1. Okay, and then now our sum of forces on number two is equal to m2 acceleration in the system, which is also equal to force, force of gravity to minus force of tension. Because now you swap the signs on this one. And now, given our two completed sum of forces equations, we can solve for our force of tension, as asked over here. So you may be thinking, which equation should we use? It doesn't seem like there's too much of a difference between the two, other than the signs are flipped. But that's exactly what the issue is, is that signs are flipped. So our original equation here, where we figured out our acceleration, has this set as our positive and negative. We can only use the free body diagram or the equation that uses this same positive and negative scheme. Otherwise, you will come out with different positives and negatives in your answer. So this is the one that matches that. This one doesn't. So we're not going to use this one. So we're going to use this equation, which states that M2A system is equal to F g2 minus ft and then now let's simplify this down so we can get t isolated so if we add t over and then subtract m2a system over we get force of tension is equal to force of gravity 2 minus m2a of the system and now let's sub in our value for a of the system in Force of tension is equal to force of gravity, which I'm going to just simplify right now. Force of gravity is equal to m2g minus m2. And then A of the system is equal to gravity m2 minus m1 all over m1 plus m2. Okay, so this is our, this is what it looks like so far. So now what we need to do is we need to solve for our force of tension from this point. And what we get is force of tension is equal to, sorry if I was paused there for a little bit, I was referring back to my work just to remember what I did, M2. This G is multiplied by all that, so we can actually pull it straight out because that's how doing that works. Okay, and then notice how these two are the same thing here. I'm going to refer back to a law of algebra that states that if you have ax plus bx, I'm actually going to say x minus bx, is equal to x a minus b. So if we take this into account and we set our x in this case equal to m to g, what we will get is force of tension is equal to m to g parentheses. Our a value here is 1 because there's a coefficient of 1 attached to this minus this entire blob of nonsense minus m1 over m1 plus m2 and then this would be our completed answer for force of tension and this is actually the one you see on the answer of assignment 26.5 technically you can go even further with this and then rationalize the denominator and then further simplify it but for the sake of getting this all simple i'm not going to do that right now although if you want to see me simplify this down you can continue watching this video, and but if this is what you were looking for, this is it right here. Okay, 
Now, for the sake of simplifying it down, because I want to simplify it down, and so that you can see how it actually works, I'm going to simplify it down right here. So, m2g times 1 minus, which I'm actually going to simplify it immediately, to m1 plus m2 minus m2 minus m1 all over m1 plus m2. Basically what I did was I rationalized this denominator and subtracted it all in one step. Okay. Now what we do is we take this numerator and then add the things necessary. m1 plus m1 is 2m1. m2 minus m2 is 0 all over m1 plus m2 and then multiply this in now and our answer for force of tension is equal to 2m1 m2 gravity all over m1 plus m2 and this is our answer for tension completely simplified down